Let's see number five. A five bass limit. Wow. 17 pounds and four ounces is what you need for the win. Five today worth. 18 pounds, three ounces. Your champion is Mark Rose. Wow. Well, we're back out here, Lake Gunnersville, the day after the tournament. And Mark Rose, you did it, man. You got a victory on Gunnersville. Just another Tennessee River win for you, you know? <laughs> What a blessing, man. I tell you, it was a, it was a grind, though. Mm -hmm. I tell you, when I blasted off, I, I just knew somebody, Brian or Alex or somebody, was yep. going to go to a bridge and catch 30 pounds. I've been beat on a bridge here twice. I've had a second and a like a fourth place finish here early, uh, been beat by a bridge. But no, it all worked out this week. I was very thankful, Kyle, that I actually won one shallow. So I, <laughs> I can get that ledge deal uh, label off of me, but it was a fun week. What a blessing. I love this lake. And we're back out here. Uh, you know, obviously it's a little loud. We got a, a, a causeway here with some riprap. Uh, you caught some fish off of this. So we're gonna fish along and we're gonna kind of dive into exactly how you caught some fish shallow on Lake Gunnersville. So let's get after it, man. Let's do it, man. When you're fishing riprap like this, you know, there's always a little um, it's either flat or usually on riprap, they pile these rocks out there t so far and then it just kind of stops. When the wind's blowing on it, it's blowing bait and everything up there and they get up there real shallow. I was holding my rod tip up real high, skirting it right along where I felt like the bait fish would be blown up on. And then whenever it was calm like this, they sat right on that little ledge, a uh, little mini ledge. I would position my boat out just a little bit more and I wouldn't really make 45s, but almost. So you get to cover the shallow part if there's one up there shallow, but mostly that little ledge. And always keep up with, okay, okay, if I made a cast at that rock and I covered the shallow part of it with my first few, few cranks all the way down on the little ledge. And then my next cast, always make a mental note, kind of like a crop duster. Uh, I would go to that next rock and I feel like my bait's going to come along and if I, if I miss that fish right there and he was just to the right of it, that cast would get him. And I would just methodically cover this entire stretch of riprap where I gave him every opportunity if there was a willing fish there. A lot of the crankbaits the cast go with, but I mean, you got this old school flat side. Yeah. Well, a flat bait in cold water has proven, I mean, we all know shad wrap. Mm -hmm. has always caught them for years and when the water's cold. Well, Strike King, um, 12, 10, 12 years ago, they had a lineup in their, um, in, in their baits called a, it was a custom shop. Yep. And we had this old flat side and it, you can see it's real thin. It comes through the water real tight and it doesn't have rattles. It doesn't have the loud mass of plastic on it. Mm -hmm. And it just comes through the water real light. And that's, that's why, you know, fish have always eaten that shad wrap. It's just so, you know, it's a pain to throw. But, um, but this one, they, they actually throw really nice and it just has that real tight wobble. In cold water, you can't have a loud, wide wobbling bait and this just catches them when it's cold. Most people, when you see them throwing a flat side, it's on a spinning rod. But I yeah. mean, this one you could throw on casting gear. Yep, yep. I actually, uh, I actually put a coat of a, a, a epoxy on this one to give it a little, it seals it pretty good. Sure. And um, and it gives me a, just a little bit more weight to throw it. It doesn't add that big bulky weight like a plastic lure, but it adds just enough to help me throw it real well. Well, this is my stopping point. I know because that's my little landmark right there, the old cooler. I knew nobody would take it, so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty safe for a buoy. the other day and you absolutely warm out no big ones but I mean it's kind of a it was a confidence boost sort of during the day since you were only catching a couple good ones a day right every tournament fisherman needs that little spot where you can hey if things go south you can pull up and get a few bites just you know more than anything just to help you mentally 
And, uh, and that's what this spot was. I figured out in practice that all these little rock islands through here, they're community holes, mm -hmm. but they do have some keepers on them. And I was just slowly working them with a jig. When I found them, I, f I realized that the bites were so light and so subtle that I really, you know, I was throwing a uh, half ounce football jig on them. And then when they were so subtle, I realized that I wanted to go down the size. And I ended up actually throwing it on a, uh, it's a little quarter ounce Strike King jig. I was putting a little KVD chunk on it, putting it on 10 pound line and a spinning rod. And just, I don't know, it's just confidence. I felt like sure. it got me a few more bites. Uh-oh. That one there would have come in real handy yesterday if I <laughs> drove a Probably real close. About he's 15 inches. Mark, you had, uh, you know, your family was, was here for you uh, at this tournament. Um, were they here the entire time or did, um, when did they show up? they come down with you? No, they try to they try to come to every cut okay. that, I, that I make, whether you know wherever we're at, if we got to fly them there or whatever. Fortunately, this one you know, I'm only about four hours away from here, so they were able to come up. But you know they they have school, so they have mm -hmm. to work around that. And when they got out of school Friday, they loaded up. Team Rose was here to <laughs> support their man. I appreciate them. Love them dearly, and they really help things. It's that hug and that I need from from my family, from my wife and girls, to calm me down or whatever. You know, sometimes doing these videos, we ask, uh, you know, kind of what your favorite memory of the week was. But I got to imagine it's that big one you <laughs> yeah. caught at the very end. I don't have to think very hard on that one. Uh, I was. I was where we just were with right about 19 minutes left. And I made, you know, I made a run that took me seven minutes. And I ran to a place where I have caught four of my biggest fish this week. And I, and I was sitting there going, the wind was crashing on the rocks. And I was like, you know, I could keep sitting here fighting this. Um, I'm probably not going to catch anything, or I could go make fewer casts mm -hmm. on a higher percentage big fish area, which is what I felt like I needed to win. And uh, I ran back there to the back. There was a there was another boat that you know, definitely hadn't seen me fish or, or anything, and he was sitting right where I wanted to be. So I said, "Well, that stinks." Well, there was another little spot right around the corner where I had caught a four pounder earlier that day. So I went around there, nothing. I was like, man, I got time to make like two casts on that area. Cause the boat started idling and he saw that, mm -hmm. you know, I was coming in. So he, he idled off. I made a cast right where his boat was sitting. One cast, I switched to that shad bait before I left there. Made one cast, called five and a half pounder. And Kyle, I screamed so loud, crows started coming out of, out of the trees. Yeah! Woo! Woo! Rooster started crowing. <laughs> Woo! Eagles was squealing. Woo! Very not Mark Rose's, but... <laughs> Again, man, I'm a competitor. That fish, for some reason, I didn't know what anybody else had, but for some reason, deep down inside, my gut feeling said, you just won that fish. Yeah. There he is. Oh, what'd I do? I found one. Ooh. Not even a bad one. Ooh. Not even a bad one. Oh. That fish. Yeah! Handy popped off. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I got checked if he's got your jig because he you broke one off, so. I got one. Nice! Well, we busted out another couple of rods uh, because aside from the crankbait um, and the little football jig, 
you did catch some fish on a swim jig too. I mean, you had a you had a pretty good little arsenal of things working. Um, but just tell me a little about um, you know why a swim jig, why what we're fishing here. Well, I began fishing these little grass lines, throwing a vibrating jig, and and they were just slapping at it. Mm -hmm. And I went to a swim jig and um, actually started catching them. And so it was just a I don't know, just a, a little deal that I discovered just it got me some bites. And at this point, I came here when I had four fish. And uh, on the final day, the final day, I came right back here to this little grass line. And uh, I hadn't been here and caught uh, right along this bank. I missed four and uh, actually went to a white one. And uh, ended up catching that fish. So that was the uh, that was the the fish that it didn't win it for me. Thrift would have still beat me with that with what I had, but it gave me the just the mental boost. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have you don't have a, you don't have a limit. And you've gone 29 hours without a bite. <laughs> what one fish has done yeah. for you. Right on cue. <laughs> that little swimming caffeine shed trailer is just dynamite. Whether it's a vibrating jig, a swim jig, even weedless through mm -hmm. grass. I really appreciate you coming back out here after a win. You know, you got to sleep in a little bit this morning. That yeah, was probably that was pretty nice. nice. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, showing us all this stuff and, um, gosh, I mean, it, it was cool to watch it go down. You know, I think awesome guy to have this happen to, you know, just another Tennessee River win for Mark Rose, shallow, grind it out, and, uh, man, to catch that that kicker at the end of the day, what, what a storyline, right? Man, I couldn't. I can look out across the lake right now while we're closing this up and, and probably shed a tear just because I just feel just overwhelmed with, with joy and happiness and uh, a blessing of the week and just on a lake that I just absolutely love. Uh, fun week, man. Really fun week. Well, I appreciate it, Mark. Congratulations again. Thank you.